Okay, we're continuing with the um, tutorial of War for America. This is part four, and we're beginning with the late spring turn of 1776. As always, we begin with the reinforcement uh, phase. The colonials only get a leader, Green. He'll go into the leader pool. And the British will be adding Howe's fleet, General Grant with 10 British, and General Niephausen and 10 Germans. Of course, they will arrive in the From Europe box. We've put the reinforcements on the board, and now we're rolling for the first initiative. Colonials four, British one. So the Colonials are moving first. The first action phase of the late spring turn, 1776. What do the Colonials do? Well, first thing we can do is remove this D marker. That comes off at the end of the phase anyway. So, what are some of the Colonial options? They've secured the North pretty well. They've got Gates as a blocking force. Washington is here with a pretty good army and could gather up some of this militia. And we still have lots of Continentals here in the South that don't have good leadership. So I think a good move would be to pick General Green, who's an A-class leader, and put him on perhaps that four at Alexandria and get him moving. I think that's the best the Colonials can do right now. Now it's about time the Colonials burn up some of these cards that they've been holding for a long time. So now would be a good time to get this extended march card in. And this way Green can get another two moving points. He only needs one, and he can join Washington. One, two, three, four, plus the extended march. So we've got Green now inside Washington's army. Washington's army now consists of 17 Continentals, four militia, and Nathaniel Green. So that's a very formidable force there at New London, Connecticut. A house force at New London is still only 13, still a formidable army, but I think the best move would be to get those reinforcements in, Nate Powson and Grant, and send them to New London to make a counter formidable army. So let's roll the die, see what they get for naval movement. They want two, so they're not getting too far. Actually, no, they'll just have enough to make it. So they'll go one and two to New London. So this whole force, three fleets there, uh, is now inside Howe's army. So Howe's army now is quite formidable. Now it consists of 33 factors and lots of leadership. So now it is the dominant force on the board. And here's a case where initiative will be important again because we've got two big forces close enough to each other to collide and let's see who moves first. Well, the dice and the colonials move first. So put the action pulse marker down and see what options Washington and his Continental Army has. Well, I see two options open to the colonials. They could, they could continue to reinforce gates in the north by bringing these Continentals down. Washington could entrench. It seems a shame not to use these militia, but Washington's already fairly formidable. Schuyler's only a two at New York. Can't decide whether to entrench Washington or reinforce the North. I think I'm gonna reinforce, no, I think I'll have uh, Washington entrench. So he will roll his initiative very likely he'll get it. He gets a two, so Washington gets his initiative, and therefore he entrenches New Haven. So how does move on in? He decides to fight. Washington will be quite formidable. Okay, now it's the British turn. They've got a lot of options too. And I'll tell you one thing about the playing the British. 
you can't just run around attacking continental forces and destroying SP. You won't win the game that way. You've got to have a strategy and keeping in mind victory, victory conditions. So you can make a, a strategy to destroy continental armies of five and get the two major victories for the win or conquer territory. So as long as you have a strategy, you've got a chance. But if you're just running around uh, killing things, that's no strategy. So let me think about this one for a moment. While I'm sorely tempted to move Howe with his gigantic army, I think we have an opportunity for Carlton there in Canada. He can activate, and I think he should be able to push Gates out, maybe as far back as Ticonderoga. So I'm going to activate Carlton. Carlton's initiative is five. We'll see if he activates. Earl's a one, so Carlton is activated. So Carlton will move directly on to Gates at St. Jean. Now they look at the map. Carlton has 11 combat factors plus a lot of modifiers. Gates has only four. Some good modifiers too, but he's heavily outnumbered. I think Gates should try to fall back. So he'll roll the die. Initiative is uh, five, and he rolled a two, so he's fine. So he falls back through Saint Jean to Valcour, and Carlton can keep moving. Now we've got some new rules coming in here now, because for the first time we're moving armies, and when British armies move, they are allowed to leave garrison counters behind them. True, they're only a quarter strength point, but they have a very limited defense and also show possession. So Carlton will continue to advance on Valcourt, leaving a small garrison at Saint-Jean. Once again, Gates will have the chance to retreat before combat. Rolling for his initiative, he rolls a one. He can retreat again, and he does so to Ticonderoga. Carlton will once again leave a garrison counter behind and advance on Ticonderoga. Now, Gates has got a big decision here. He can fall behind or defend at Ticonderoga. Now, it's minus three to the dice to assault Ticonderoga. He's only a four, and Carlton's got a lot of modifiers. But I'm not sure whether he should fight or not. I nearly misspoke a rule there. Now, at this point in the game, a very, very important rule comes into play. Because you see, this is the first time that British regulars have invaded the Middle States, and that means you're going to be rolling for the militia of the Middle States. Remember that one-time thing? One-time thing um, for each region. So, you temporarily pause the game, and you take this regional depleted marker and put it on there to remind us that the Middle States militia will now be depleted. That's a one-time thing that they're raised. What does that mean? Well, you remember when we look on the chart, and we roll for each colony in the Middle States and see how many militia we get. So let's start with New York itself. We'll roll the die and see what militia are raised. Rolling the die for the New York militia. One die. They roll a one. Unbelievable. Which is very bad for them. They don't get any militia in New York. That is going to be not good. All right, so now we're going to roll for Pennsylvania because it's part of the Middle States. We we'll roll for Pennsylvania, and they get a two, which is one half. Not good. I mean, it's better than nothing, but half of the militia in Pennsylvania is six, so they actually get three. They get three militia in Pennsylvania. You can put up to four in one space. Pennsylvania is quite a distance away from the front there, but if they want to be close to the front, 
I guess Port Augusta might be the best. So they'll raise three militia, Port Augusta. So not getting very good rolls here. Now we have to roll for Pencil, or rather uh, New Jersey. How many New Jersey militia are raised? They get a two, again, one half. Well, it's early in the revolution. Militia just is not turning out in the numbers they thought. So we'll put them at, you've got three places there, Monmouth, Trenton, Wilmington, no, Wilmington is Delaware. Um, hmm, I have to put them in Morristown too. No, I'll put them at Trenton. So a very disappointing militia roll. Now we go back to the British turn. That's just a temporary interruption. So Gates has got a decision. Does he fight at Ticonderoga or retreat? I think, boy, a lot of modifiers are against him. But the dice are fickle. He's got to stop the British from moving. Because if you don't fight a battle, your enemy can keep on moving. So the very act of fighting a battle, as long as it's not an overrun, you actually stop him. So Gates is going to fight. So a big battle at Ticonderoga. Let's see what the result is. Okay, Carlton's force will be adding five to the dice. That's because he's using Carlton's ability, his next best leader, Fraser. And he's got two tactical leaders, adding five to the dice. But he must subtract three because he's assaulting uh, a fortress. Gates, on the other hand, will be on the five table only, but he will be adding four to the dice. So anything could happen. Now note also that the British did not have to attack Ticonderoga because it's a key space. They could just sit there and eventually lay siege to it. But the British want to push on. They're impatient. And so we're going to fight this battle and see what the role is. Okay, well, may not be enough. Okay, I said that the British were in the end, what, they're adding uh, three, they're adding two of the dice. So nine, they rolled an 11. An 11 on the eight to 14 table is a one, two star result. One and two stars. Gates has rolled eight, he's adding four, he rolled a 12. He rolled two stars. He actually defeated the British column. Well done, Gates. Let's take those losses. Okay, we've marked the losses. The British lost one British regular and one loyalist. Gates lost one. Carlton's force must go back one space and have a D on them. Now that result just might have saved the northern colonies. We'll see, because there's still another action pulse left. Like I said, with that victory at Ticonderoga, Gates just might have saved the Northern Army there. But um, it would be nice if they could counterattack uh, Carlton's force, but I think that's beginning to push it. Um, Gates is still heavily outnumbered, so I think he'll be content with that victory and be done with it. But what else can they do? Well, how is eventually going to get moving? So I think Washington could move up to Hartford and entrench, and they could add two militia, but then that would leave the door open for New York. He's got to prevent Howe from getting into New York. Hmm. Actually, he still could go up to Hartford, connect him, go to New England, and entrench. And that's what he's going to do. So I'm going to activate Washington. Well, if I die, he's fine. So that's what I'm going to do. Washington is going to go to Hartford, pick up him, and go to New London and entrench there. So Washington has just added two more militia to his force, and he's still a very formidable blocking force for Howe. Okay, now we're rolling for the last initiative of the late spring turn. The British go first. Okay, last action pulse of the turn. Well, we can begin by taking the D marker off. Now, um, Carlton could have another go at Ticonderoga, 
that was pretty nice dice that the Colonials um, got, so that's still a possibility. But I can't have Howe just sit there with the largest army on the board doing nothing. I feel he's got to do something dramatic, and I think he will. He's just got to do something. So, what can he do? Sure would be nice to overrun Massachusetts. Boy. Or just move on Washington. What a dilemma. Yep, I'm going to move just directly on Washington. So, I'll leave a garrison at New London and move Howe directly on Washington. First of all, let's see what Howe's initiative is. Now, for a garrison at New London, I'll leave probably three. Let me just do a strength size analysis here. Okay. Uh, House force is gigantic. It's well over 30 combat factors. Now, a three-star general can move and have combat with 20. That's the maximum you can move with. Or you can be on a stack of 30 or 40 if you want, but you can only move with 20. So Howe's disposable force that can move is 20. So Howe is going to take 20 factors, leave the rest at New London. Let's see what Howe can do. Well, first of all, let's roll for his initiative. Howe, his initiative is four. And he rolls, gets a three. So Howe can move with 20 combat factors. Let's see where he goes. Okay, we're having Howe move directly on Washington with 20 combat factors. Now, Washington's got a huge army himself, and I've just done the math, and uh, it's pretty darn equal. I may regret that I did that. Okay, so Washington has decided to fight, so we're gonna fight out a huge battle at New London with Washington entrenched, and it's gonna be very close. Yes, this battle is going to be very close. All right, so, both parties are going to be on the largest table possible, which is the 15 to 20. Howe will add three for himself, two for Clinton, that's five, and he's got Ferguson with him, so total modifier of six. However, Washington does have entrenchments, so he'll be adding five on the largest table. Washington, on the other hand, has Washington himself, adding two, Green, a, adding three more, so it's five. He'll be adding five to the dice. So it's actually 100% equal. We'll roll the die and that's who the victor is going to be. Rolling for the big battle at New London. Here we go. Eight and five is 13, top result. And eight and five is 13, top result. Well, there we have the absolute bloodiest battle we've had so far. And that's the bloodiest result you can get on the table. Each has inflicted three two stars on them, which means Howe's lost uh, and he has to retreat. But boy, the casualties. So we have to obey the um, figures, uh, which means regulars are lost first, then militia. We'll do that now. Okay, remember those casualties have to be taken in a particular order. So I goofed slightly with the British. Serves me right. I have to lose three. But the first loss has to be a regular. So I'll take one off the Germans here. Make that a three. The second one must be a militia or loyalist, which means this one. But Ferguson is attached to him. So we'll have to assume that Ferguson is killed in that. Should always have extra units to absorb the losses, but I didn't. And the third can be from uh, whatever force you want. Well, I'll take one off the British here, and we'll make that into a 12. Howe's army after he's taken the losses. Well, the British, I mean the Americans, have to take losses too, they have to take three. So they'll take one off the four, and they'll take one off the militia, and what the heck, I'll take it off the militia, because that's a renewable resource. So, Washington certainly has won his first battle against the British. Howe has the unenviable task of retreating back to Newport and wearing a D marker.
So the Colonials have won a great victory against Howe, only pushing him back, and it's certainly not a major victory, but a victory nonetheless. Now it's the British turn. What can they do? That's actually the Colonial turn, of course, not the British one. While it's uh, tempting to have Washington attack Howe, um, both sides would be on the largest table with a lot of modifiers. If Washington won, he would cause an additional loss on Howe because he's currently deed. But that's pretty iffy. I think the Northern Army needs a bit of attention. That's under Gates. So Gates will roll for his initiative. Uh, he gets it. And my intention there was to build a fort at Fort Edward. At this point, I think it might be a good place to end the video. So that ends all the action pulses. So when we begin the next video, and that might be the final part, we're going to be in the uh, late summer of 1776. So I hope you're enjoying the video. It's teaching you something. Try to make them interesting. And uh, all I can say is thank you for watching.